Ephesians 6 and 17. Go ahead and stand with me. We'll read this verse together, okay? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Notice, if you will, when it talks about the helmet of salvation, notice as Paul writes here, the, the continuity, if you will, of the Scriptures. Hold Ephesians chapter 6, we're going to go back. But look at 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, okay? Just a couple of books over. It's interesting how the Lord ties together salvation with the helmet. Again, covering the, covering the mind, uh, covering the head. You say, Pastor, why is the helmet and salvation tied together? I'm going to explain some things biblically, all right, to you in a minute. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, look at verse number 8. And he says this, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, watch this, the same analogy, and for an helmet, the what? Hope of salvation. The hope of salvation. So here's what it's teaching, that is this. Hey, you have a helmet, at both times it talks about the helmet of salvation, but this one here says the hope of salvation. Here's what you got to understand. This word hope, in Titus chapter 2, verse number 13, it talks about the blessed hope, right? And the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That word hope is not what we use today as far as, you know, I hope this is going to happen. That's not the mm, maybe so-ish stuff that's going to happen. When it says the hope of salvation or the blessed hope, this is referring to a confidence. This is referring to a very confident expectation that we know. It's not like a uh, again, the hope of salvation. No, this is like a no-so of my salvation. So he says, you've got the helmet of the hope of salvation. And then Ephesians, the helmet of salvation, which means this. I know here, I know I have a hope that is steadfast and sure, the Bible says. I have a hope that is blessed. I have a hope that is confident. I have a hope that is very, with great and anticipation and great expectation. My hope, as the song says, is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust, trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ a solid rock I stand, all the ground is sinking sand. How many say amen and amen to that, right? And so that is the hope. That's the hope. When Jesus writes here, and he, or Paul writes under inspiration, and he says, listen, this hope of salvation, this helmet of the hope, what's this mean? The helmet helps your hope. The helmet of salvation helps you know what you got. The helmet of salvation is going to help you know what Jesus gave to you. That here's the number one plot or ploy of the devil, and that is this to take away your hope of salvation, to take away, maybe you doubt salvation. The number one thing that has just weakened Christians, I call it the kryptonite, how many like Superman? Any Superman fans? Superman? How many of men think you are Superman? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, okay, anyway. But the number one, the kryptonite, right? The kryptonite, the thing that's going to weaken and just debilitate a Christian is doubt. It's doubt. Can I ask you a question? In all honesty, how many ever doubted your salvation? Would you raise your hand? Have you ever doubted your salvation? You doubted whether or not you were really saved? You doubted, you know, you just said no. Most Christians, at one time or another in their life, have, after salvation, doubted that salvation. Because it is, an, and it is a plot of the enemy to try to get one to doubt. Sin will make me doubt. Uh, just not in the scriptures will make me doubt. Um... Not being, not being in church will make you doubt, but in many cases, your own mind. And so God says, I'm going to give you a helmet, the helmet of salvation, the helmet of the hope of salvation. Let me give you one more. Um, again, hold Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to go back there. But look at Isaiah 59, Isaiah 59 and 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and in helmet. Watch what it says here. Isaiah says this. And in helmet of salvation upon his head. Wow. So he's talking here and he's explaining how 
they put the helmet of salvation upon their head. He says in Ephesians, the helmet of salvation. He says in Thess- Thessalonians, I'm getting somewhere. The helmet of the hope of salvation. Again, it's to protect what you believe, protect what you know, and protect specifically your salvation. So uh, the biggest prayer for Christian parents, for many of you right now, is that your kids would be saved. Number one prayer for parents. I mean, as soon as they're born, wife and I, we prayed for our kids to be saved. Most parents here this morning, you always pray for your kids to be saved. And once they get saved, man, thank God and hallelujah. However, there is going to be something that's going to try to rob them of that salvation, rob them of the confidence or the knowing that they're saved. So 1 John 5, 13, he says this, These things I've written unto you that ye may know, right, hope, know that ye have eternal life. And so God says, I want you to know that you're saved. I want you to know that you have eternal life. Look at Hebrews chapter 6. I know we're bouncing around, but I want you to see this. Hebrews chapter number 6 and verse number, we're going to begin verse number 1. It's hard to be able to grow on salvation if I don't have it settled in my heart that I know, that I have hope. We're going to look at another word in a minute, and that is going to be the assurance, and that I have this eternal security, and I have this nailed down. And this is what the helmet of salvation is all about. This is what it's doing, okay? All right, Hebrews chapter 6. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, which means to grow, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works of faith toward God. Here's what he's saying. Once you get the principles of the salvation of Jesus Christ, now you need to grow on this. Don't go back and keep laying down the same foundation. This is the same thing with the helmet of salvation. A lot of people kind of keep going back on whether or not, am I saved or was I not saved? Was I 50-50 about this? I'm not sure about this. And, you gotta, and so Paul writes to Hebrews, to the, to the Israelites, and he says, listen, make sure you get this settled. Once you get the foundation of your salvation settled, now you can grow. Now, look at verse number, verse number two. Of the doctrine of baptisms and of the laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and, the, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. Now, watch verse number four, cataclysmic verse. This verse will change your life. For it is what? Impossible. Say it a little louder. It is what? Impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Here's what he's saying. If you have once tasted God and you have the Holy Ghost, I mean, you had the Holy Ghost living inside of you, he's saying it is impossible. What's impossible, Pastor? Once you got that enlightenment and once you tasted the, the gift and you had the Holy Ghost, verse number five, and have tasted the good word of God, God's word was good. You, you understood it. And the powers of the world to come. Mm. If they, that Christian, shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Now this is very, very important. You must understand this for the helmet of salvation. He's saying it is impossible. If you got saved, if you were born again of the Spirit. That's what he's saying. Partake of the Holy Spirit. You were born again of the Spirit. You tasted the word of God. It was real to you. It spoke to you. The spirit was bearing witness with his spirit that I am a child of God. And that was the word of God. And it's working in me. I've been enlightened. I mean, I, once I was blind and now I can see. And I know Jesus saved me. Now, if you got that and you know that happened to you, and then you, the Bible says, and then you fall away, which means this, you backslide or you get out of church or you just get mad and angry and you fall away. Now watch this. People fall away all the time. But it says it is impossible for you to go back and lay that same repentance that you did unto salvation years ago when you got saved. You cannot go back and lay that same repentance again. You cannot go back. If you really were born again, you cannot go back and do that again. It is Words. Impossible. Watch. Here's why I, here's why I say this. And I want to explain this to you very, very clearly. Uh, verse number... Okay, verse number six. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Here's what it's saying. You put God, put Jesus to a shame because you're saying that Jesus needs to die twice. Crucify him afresh, which means again, meaning this. When Jesus died for me, he died for me once and for all. Right? And when I put my faith and trust in him and he saves me, he saves me once and for all. 
This is where you get the statement, once saved, always saved. And the reason why that is, is because of this passage right here that teaches you it is impossible to go back and lay that again. So how many thank God that you have a no-so salvation and not a maybe-so salvation? Man, thank God. But here's the thing. This helmet has got to go on. And this helmet has got to be strong. And this helmet has got to protect your mind and what you believe and what you know about your salvation. Watch. Maybe you raised your hand and yes, I doubted it. Can I tell you this? Jesus wants you to know that regardless of as, as you know that you were born again, as far as you stray away, here's what you need to remember. You need to remember that you did get saved and that I did repent unto Christ. I put all my faith and trust in Jesus Christ and I am not leaving. I, 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 I did do that, but yeah, I, got, I, I fell away. That's true. And I got away from the Lord Jesus. I need to come back and repent to Jesus under good works. Yes. I need to get my life right. Yes. Is Jesus going to punish me? Yes. If I go to see Jesus at the judgment seat, I have no rewards. Yes. But am I saved? Yes. Doesn't mean that you fall away from salvation because it is impossible. It's impossible. Put your helmet on. Put your helmet on. And even if you veer away, when you come back and having that assurance that when you, when, and this is why when, when somebody gets saved, I'll make sure I drill this, make sure you understand Listen, what you're doing right now, which, when you put your faith in yesterday, was out soul winning yesterday, knocking on doors, and uh, was over there by Be- Belvedere Street there in York and talked on, knocked on a young man's door. He's in his young 20s, and uh, just talking to him. Gave him a track, talking about, hey, why don't you have your kids ride the bus, this and that, and I don't know if his kids came today or not, but uh, he said he's going to send his kids to church, and I said, let me, let me, talk, let me talk about you for a minute. And I said, gave him a track, and I said, let me talk about Jesus Christ, and make a long story short after a long period of time, he, he bowed his head and received Jesus Christ to be a Savior. Amen. Tremendous. Yeah. Tremendous. Todd was with me, and I can remember talking to him about this, and he said, make sure he knows this. And he, even Todd was saying, hey, you're going to go walk in there, and the devil's going to beat you up, and make sure you know that you're saved. Make sure you know you have this settled, because what happens is when the doubt settles in and when the things come in and take, I don't know if I'm saved, man. I don't know if I really meant that. I don't know if I'll listen to that. What's going to happen is it's going to keep drilling you, and it's going to get you further away from God and destroy your life and this and that. Hebrews 6, now look at verse number 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of what? Hope unto the end. Listen, we want you to be diligent to know that you are fully assured, confident of the hope, confidence, expectation unto the end when Jesus Christ comes back of your salvation. The context here is of your salvation. And so or your repentance unto Christ. So make sure you understand this, this is just a, a confidence message for everybody of the helmet of salvation. Make sure that you know that you know that you know that Jesus Christ is your Savior. Amen. And make sure, if you know you did it back then, and even if you got away, say, man, listen, I, I got, I don't know, man, if I, I don't know if I meant that. Did you taste of the heavenly, of the heavenly gift? Did you understand the Bible? Did you feel the Holy Spirit working in your life? If you say, yes, I felt the Holy Spirit working in my life. Yes, I understood the Bible. Yes, and this, and this at that time, don't go back and redo that. That's what he's saying. Don't go back. Hold, hold, hold tight. Because the devil wants to knock you off. He doesn't, he's going to knock you off of your, your course. He's going to knock you off of being able to be a strong uh, witness for Christ. Because what it does, it just diminishes our, our confidence in the word of God and the prayers and all that stuff. So anyway, so be fully persuaded. Be fully persuaded. Uh, Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy 3 and 14. He says, hey, listen, Timothy, things that you have learned and has been assured of. Whoo. And from a child, you've been taught the Holy Scriptures to make you wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Timothy, remember, when you got saved, you are fully assured, which means you are fully persuaded you know, Timothy. Listen, Titus, you know. Hey, church, you know. Hey, Israel, Israel, you know. Paul writes over and over again, you know this. You have the hope in this. You have the assurance of this. And stay diligent to the assurance. Why is it that we have communion every Sunday? Not every Sunday. Once a month. Typically, once a month we have communion. Jesus said, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. Meaning this, if we don't remember Often, Jesus. Do you know that the church will eventually forget Jesus? You have to do something to remember. Why is it that I wear a ring? 
It's not because I like jewelry. <laughs> I don't like jewelry. But I wear this ring to remind me I got hitched 25 years ago. I want her to know that. I remember this. Jesus said, I, w- I want you to remember because I don't want you to forget. Listen, I want you to remember because I don't want you to forget. Every time you see a rainbow in the sky, I want you to remember he made a covenant. Never shore the earth by water again. It's re- it reminds us of God's covenant every single time. Why well, do read the Bible every day to remind me, to remind me, to remind me? Hey, when you put the helmet on, put the helmet on every day. And every, every, t- every day when you get some things about how you do this, you'll be assured and persuaded over and over again. Now, I asked a couple of my guys if they had a helmet. So this is Brother Owens' helmet from the Marines. Where'd he go? Yeah. So I'm going to put it on. I'm going to show you something. Do I need a mirror right now? <laughs> okay. Now, you're going to say to yourself, why has the pastor got a helmet on? Seriously? They say when you ride a motorcycle, you should wear a what? A helmet. Now, how many of you guys are mavericks and you say, I don't need no helmet? Go right, get on your bicycle or your motorcycle <laughs> and ride without a helmet. You know, <clears throat> they say about motorcycles, it's not if you get in an accident, it's when. So, yeah, you ought to have a helmet on because that day is going to come when the, not if, it's when it's going to come. Hey, do you know there's a, there's truly, there truly is an enemy? And it's not if he comes, it's when he comes. And that evil day is going to come. And so, listen, when you're in the military and you're going to go out in a war, they, they don't say, hey, you know what? If you feel like putting your helmet on, go and put your helmet on. No, you nuts. You don't put this thing on, you're going to get blasted. You, know, you, you, have, you have no protection. And, what, and once you lose your mind, you lose everything. Do you understand that once you lose that assurance of your salvation in your Christian walk and your Christian strength, you lose everything. Here's what's interesting about this is it protects the mind. And so I have to make sure that I get into my, put my helmet on every day. One of the things you do to, for your helmet is you remember. That's putting the helmet, that's protecting your mind. I remember what Jesus did. Communion is a good example of this. I remember when Jesus saved me. Even if I get away from God, and I'm in sin, I'm doing whatever, I still, every day I discipline myself to remember what did Jesus do for me when I was five years of age. What am I doing? I'm putting that helmet on. Because the devil wants to come and say, listen, when I, when I was witnessing that guy yesterday, I could have been like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. I don't, I don't even know if I'm saved. I don't know if I want to do this. But no, no, the helmet has got to be on. He's, he's coming in. Boy, he, 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 wants to, he wants to destroy my mind. He wants to take that, that, that assurance of salvation. He wants to take that out of my mind. He's going to do all that I can to take it out. Sin, doubt, enemies, friends, p- pulling me away, doing whatever, whatever it takes. But listen, you and I got to make sure we put this thing on. And watch this now. It's going to help cover my ears too. And so the things that I listen to, my helmet's covering my ears. Be careful what you listen to. Be careful, be careful of the things that are trying to take you away from Christ. Because I got to keep the helmet. It's protecting my ears. I got to keep the helmet of salvation on and make sure I got the hope of salvation and the assurance of my salvation and the no-so of my salvation. And then I thank God every day that I'm saved. I don't want to get over my salvation I don't want to get over the repentance of good, uh, 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 from dead works unto good works unto Christ. I don't want to get over me giving my life to Christ. I don't want to get over, man, when I gave my heart to Jesus when I was five years of age. I don't want to get over that stuff. But listen, I want to have the same excitement because my helmet, my mind has been protected. My ears have been protected. I've been remembering every day what Jesus has done for me. For 30-something years, 40, now, 40-something years, I've been remembering Jesus saved me. Hey, Jason, when I was five years of age, I was in a Ford Fairmont. You won't believe this. Now, watch this now. I'm putting on my helmet right now. Sitting with my dad, and he had the Bible on the dashboard. I was five years of age, and I said to my dad that day, we're going to, we're going to uh, Christian school. I was in the kindergarten, and I said, Dad, I don't want to die and go to hell. We're sitting there at the carpool. He's going to get me, drop me off to get the carpool to go take a ride over to the Christian school. And he says, okay. So this right there in that Ford Fairmont, four speed, four-door sedan, like a yellow color, like a dingy yellow color. Remember those nasty yellow dingy, anyway, it's a yellow dingy color. We're sitting there. He starts to show me and tell me, hey, Jesus died on the cross for your sins. I'm five years old. I mean, I don't but can I, to this day, I can, I can tell you right, to this day, I still remember that. 
I still remember my dad showing that to me. I still remember bowing my head. I still remember asking Jesus Christ to save me. I still remember crying about it. I remember getting out of the, at that four, getting into this big station wagon, big boat with a big barn door in the back door. I can remember climbing him on the bumper. I remember climbing on the bumper on the back of the station wagon, crying my eyes out. Everybody thought I got a, I got a spanking. And they go, man, Billy, did you get a whooping? And what happened to you? Why are you crying? I'm like, I don't know what happened. But I can tell you what happened. That is the Holy Ghost came in my life. I can tell you what happened. I got born again of the Spirit, right? And so since then, Brother Jason, a lot of things were trying to, try to get me to take my helmet off. A lot of things were trying to, if the devil can get in here, a man gets sin in there, if he can get in there and, ta- and take away that root of salvation, if he can get in here and say, listen, I want to create so much doubt in your mind, and I want to create uh, uh, trauma, I want to create spiritual anxiety, I want to create all kinds of emotional stress, I, w- I want to create all, put all these things in your mind to take away your salvation, to take away, that's why he says, David writes, after he sinned with Bathsheba, he says, Lord, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Restore unto me the joy. I need to get that back. I know I left you, but I need to come back. Please restore unto me. He writes in Psalms 23 that he would restore my soul. And God, oh, please, restore my soul and restore the joy of my salvation. And realizing there is so much joy when I put the helmet of salvation on and I know, I know that I'm saved. I know that you've done this for me. And yes, everybody else wants to just put doubt and say, did you mean it? Did you do this? Did you do that? But at the end of the day, listen, I know that I know that I'm saved. And every day I remember this. Every day I thank God for it. Every day I go back and remember what took place. And even if I'm sinning, I go back and I still remember. Man, thank God for what he did. I'll give a couple other things real quickly here. The helmet and the hope of salvation is going to preserve us in the evil day. You're living right now in the evil day. And can I tell you, we need to be giving other people helmets. Have you seen this world? How many say, Pastor, this world needs a good dose of the helmet of the hope of salvation. And say amen to that. Man, is that going to correct so many things? It'll help so many things, protect so many things. It'll preserve us in the evil day. Many a Christian right now, their minds are being attacked. Listen very carefully. Listen carefully. A lot of trauma, a lot of stress, panic, anxiety. And again, I I understand a lot of these things are part of life. I'm not negating any of those things. But through those things, many a Christian also begins to doubt their salvation. I'm not sure, not grounded, not not settled in it. So here's what I want you to do this morning. I want you to understand, I'm going to get this helmet on. And if you're not sure about it, say, Pastor, I, I don't think I ever was born again. Pastor, I don't think I ever, I've I've never really, never felt the Holy Spirit, never, my mom told me I was saved, but I don't remember. My dad told me, but I, I, if you you said it, I don't remember. Then I'm going to tell you something. This morning, you need to get the helmet of salvation on. This morning, you need to be born again. This morning, you need to come to Christ and say, I'm not going to bank on what my mom and dad says. I'm not going to bank on what my wife said about me. I, I need to know for me, for myself, in my own heart, that I know that I'm saved, that I, I, that I can feel it, that I know it, I've sensed it, and make sure you get that helmet of salvation on. It'll preserve you in the evil day. It'll help you with your doubts and disbeliefs. The helmet is to protect us from this doubt. The helmet is of salvation. Once you continue going on, that you know that you are, if you would, married to Christ, I know that I have the helmet on, that I'm able to grow from that. I'm able to go on from that. Real quickly here. Mrs. Shutt, do you ever worry if I'm married to you? No. Right there. Mm-mm. No, you don't worry about that. I don't worry if I'm married to you. Amen. We have two children together. I know this. Why? We have a relationship. I know that I don't doubt this. I don't doubt our children. I don't doubt my wife. Every single day, I put on the helmet. Salvation, but in a relationship, our marriage. I know this. Nikki, every day, I love you. Nikki, now listen, do we fight? Do we argue? Yeah. But do we always tell each other we love each other? Do I always ask you for forgiveness? I do. But we don't doubt. 
I know that I'm married to her. She knows that she's married to me. And you know, we can go on and we serve Jesus together. I thank God for my wife because she is a hard servant. She works hard. She serves hard. She's faithful. She's loyal. She's supportive. And anything that God has called me to do or called us to do, she is so supportive. I do not question this woman. I don't doubt this woman. I don't think she questions me. I don't think she doubts me because we know that we're married. We know our family. We know our children. We, 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 we have this solid. We got that settled. And we, we're able to go on and grow from there because we got this settled. Now watch this. If I ever start doubting, you know, just a little bit of a, I think, it was, it was just, but if I seriously ever think that something's not right in our marriage, do you know how I question everything? I'm going to question where she's going. I'm going to question what she's doing. I'm going to question who she's with. I'm going to question about the kids. I'm going to, I'm going to start questioning everything. Why? Because I don't have this settled. I don't have this knowing. I don't got this concreted down. When I put the helmet of salvation on, I know that Jesus saved me. I know that he forgave me. I know he died on the cross for me. I know that he rose again from the dead. I know that when I take communion, I remember these things, and I know this every single, and I know he did it for me. Not just, not just Mike, but I know he did it for me. And why I thank God for these things, and I'm putting that helmet, I watch this, the moment I begin to doubt a little bit about my salvation, watch this, I doubt everything else. Is this Bible true? Do I need to go to church? I don't even know about the pastor. I don't know about this. Everything begins to be doubting the moment you take the helmet off. The moment you're unsure about your salvation. And this morning, church, I, I hope everybody is saved. But if this morning, if you, are, you can't say, I, I, can, I, I am, I am confident, confident in my salvation. When I know I received Christ, can I tell you, church, this morning, get that settled. You need to have a time or a place. You need to have an event you have something that you can remember and you know this is when, how, whenever, when I receive Christ. And for me, it's something that I can visit and put that helmet on every day and be able to protect my mind for my family's sake, protect my mind for my own sake, protect my mind for the church's sake, and be able to now to grow as a Christian and keep the helmet of salvation on. This is now the hour of the helmet and the hope of salvation. The gospel of salvation is being attacked more and more than ever has been. We've got to know, right? We've got to know what the, salva what the gospel is. We've got to know what the salvation is. Now watch this. And when I get this, when I get this and I put this on, and I'm being, I'm being attacked. It's trying to get me off, off course. Same way in my home. It's trying to get me off course. It's trying to hit my marriage. But, so Nikki and I both have the helmet on. We're, we're serving together. And now the church, we all put the helmet on. Watch this, because if you don't have the helmet on, you don't have the, the salvation settled. You can't help somebody else. And so listen, if, I, if I'm going to talk to Mike, I said, listen, Mike, let me tell you about Jesus Christ. Now, I'm confident because I, I know, right, I'm protected here. But I'm going to give Mike the gospel. Now, Mike receives Jesus Christ, and now Mike starts to put on the helmet. And boy, man, is it wonderful. Everybody comes into church. Can you see it now? Everybody walking into church, everybody's got a helmet on. Hey, guys. Now, Brother Owens, when you're in the military, you guys went out in the, in the, you know, the combat zone. Y'all wear helmets. And you made sure everybody else had a helmet on, too. I mean, you were somewhat in command and whatnot. And every, if, you, if they didn't have a helmet on, brother, I can't imagine what you would do if somebody didn't have their helmet on. For their own safety. Like, you need to have that helmet on. Watch this. When you come into church, listen, y'all got to have your helmets on. And you know what I mean. Make sure you know. Make sure you revisit your salvation. Make sure you have that settled. Make sure you have the full assurance. Making sure that you have that down deep and settled in your heart, and now we'll be able to grow as a church. And everywhere you go, you walk around and say, oh, listen, I got my helmet on today, Pastor. I know that I'm saved today. Oh, smutty face isn't going to get me today. He's not going to create all that kind of doubt. He's not going to create me get off kilter, but I got my helmet on today. And this morning, church, this is the hour. The hour we need to give helmets to others, give the salvation to others, give them the hope of the gospel, give them the assurance of the God. Man, this is the day, this is the hour. Yesterday, going out, every day, tell, telling somebody about Christ somehow, some way. And boy, give that out. Give that out. Can you imagine, Brother Owens, if everybody in York County was ready for the attack that's coming? They all have their armor on. 
And they all had their helmets on. And when that, when that enemy came and tried to attack our minds and attack our hearts, the entire city is ready because we all had our helmets. And guess what? The enemy couldn't get into your mind, couldn't get into your heart. And we continue to serve and battle and be able to give more of the gospel to the lost and dying world because the church has one thing for sure settled, and that is the hope of their salvation. They have it settled. They know that they're saved. There's no wishy-washy gospel. No, no, it is an assured gospel. Man, thank God for that. So I'm encouraging you. This is the hour. Settle it. Know it. Get a no-so, not a hope so, or not a maybe-so. Get a hope-so salvation. And watch this whole church. Watch this whole community walk in Jesus Christ.